How y'all doing this morning? Y'all doing all right? Good. Good. Welcome to Beacon Hill Church. I'm so thankful that you come out to join us in worship today. My name is Michael Moore, and I'm the pastor of this fellowship of believers. If you're a guest with us today, I want to thank you personally for coming out and checking out our church. I hope that you will find that our church is warm and welcome, but more importantly, that we are serious about learning and growing and serving King Jesus. Uh, we, we want to make much of Jesus in this town. Uh, it is a, uh, if I haven't got a chance to meet you, man, please stop by. I'll be outside those exit doors in the hallway after service. Make sure you come by and say hi. I'd love the chance just to get to know you and how we can minister to you and uh, your family. We are finishing up this week. Normally we just go right through books of the Bibles, but this week we're finishing up Prayer Emphasis Week 2018. It is one of my favorite weeks of the year where we just take some time and just focus on uh, getting really just back to the basics of prayer. I believe that the church will live and grow and thrive and do the will of God by being serious about prayer. And so I, I hope you've enjoyed this week. I hope you've got a chance to tune into some of the Facebook videos. But I got to tell you, like as Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, said, I would rather teach one person to pray than ten people to preach. Prayer is that important in the life of the church. And I believe as we are serious about serving King Jesus, as we are going out into the mission field and telling people about Jesus, we will only be successful if we are a church on our knees seeking his face and his will for his glory. So we have this morning the final passage, the final message that I had in Prayer Week 2018 from Colossians chapter 1. Verses 9 through 14. If you have a Bible, please turn with me there now to Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14, which will be our focal text this morning. If you don't have a copy of God's Word with you today, we have you covered. Every week we, we love to give out copies of the Bible. So if you don't have a copy of God's Word with you today, you just forgot one or don't have one, just raise your hand and one of the Beacon Hill team members will bring a copy of God's Word down to you and it'll already be bookmarked out to uh, the right place. And so, Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. If you don't have a copy of God's Word at home, we'd love to get one into your hands, so make sure you see one of our ushers as well. So there's also an opportunity um, that you can get copies of today's sermon. You can get them in a couple of ways. One, uh, they will be outside those doors after service. You can grab yourself a copy of today's sermon. Or you can also look later today on my Facebook page. There will be a link um, to today's uh, video uh, sermon. So make sure you, you do one of those things and grow in the Lord. So if you are able to, please stand now in honor of reading God's holy word this morning. As I read Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. Colossians 1, verses 9 through 14. By the way, I like seeing people get closer and closer to the front. They got like $100 a seat <laughs> last night. And these, these have already been paid for you by the blood of the Lamb Jesus Christ. Right. Right? So, uh, don't, don't be ashamed about getting the front row when the price has been paid for those seats, all right? So, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14, the Word of God says this. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. Dear Holy Father, I thank you and I praise you for just a spirit-filled worship already today. I thank you for the people that you have brought here, the people that you have brought here uh, today for the very first time, for the people that have been here from the beginning and everywhere in between, Lord. We are thankful for each and every soul that you would trust in our care. And Lord, as I proclaim your word, may I do it with conviction of heart, with clarity of speech, with boldness to proclaim the gospel message as I ought. And Lord, may the Holy Spirit work from the hearts of the hearers. And Lord, if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, may today be the day of salvation for them. Lord, I pray for a mighty work of the Holy Spirit now. Lord, may I decrease and you increase and you get all the glory. In Jesus' holy and precious name we praise you. 
Amen. You may be seated. I have entitled today's message, A Prayer for the Church. A Prayer for the Church. Typically, when we talk about prayer or, or we hit any prayer topic, we're typically talking about things that we need in our life, things that are crises that we're going through, the battles that we are facing, the hurts that we are feeling in our lives. Typically, when we talk about prayer, that is the first thing that people come to mind. When people come to ask for prayer, it is about the hurts and the trials and the tribulations that they're going through in life. I've said it before that no one has ever called me at 3 o'clock in the morning telling me that, Pastor, I need you to pray for me because my life is going so good right now. Yet, after I said that last time, many of you have offered and volunteered to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning for the fun of it. Did I not say? Forget my number. <laughs> if you need prayer, you call me at any time. I believe that we should be serious about prayer. Paul reminds us in this passage this morning that it's not just those who are going through the trials and the tribulations who need prayer. It's not just those who are going through the hurts that need prayer. It is also those who are doing well in Christ that need prayer. For those who are stepping up and stepping out in Christ Jesus, they need prayer. Because when you step up and, and grow in Christ Jesus, guess what? You are going to get the attention of the evil one. And you need prayer to withstand the battles of the devil, the schemes of the devil, so that you can continue to be used by Christ Jesus. Amen. Prayer is important for those who are doing well because it is a day-by-day -day growth. We are not to be satisfied with where we are in Christ, but we need prayer that we would keep seeking his face not being satisfied with our own salvation and growing in him and doing the will that he has set us apart for. That is my prayer for the church here today. Pray, Paul is praying for the church, the future development of the church to keep growing up in Christ Jesus. That is my prayer here for our church. The church of Colossae had a lot of new believers who were coming to Christ and they were serving Christ Jesus. Here at Beacon Hill Church, we are blessed to see people come to Christ on a regular basis. Isn't that awesome? Amen. I mean, it's just an awesome thing to see. And we have one gentleman who just came to Christ last week, and it's just it's so cool to see that. Here at Beacon Hill Church, we have people that have come back to the church who have been away from church for a long time, and, and they're getting back in the fall. They're getting back into community with the Father and the people who know him. What an awesome thing that is. Yet we also have people who have been in church all of their lives, but yet they have not experienced the things that they are experiencing here at Beacon Hill Church. They've never seen that before. And so they need prayer because we are literally a church that has boots on the ground seeking to push back the darkness that is in this town with the light of Christ. Amen. It is not <laughs> uncommon in this church for a homeless person to walk in here who is new to, to, to the circumstances that they find themselves in. It's not uncommon for this church to have someone walk in here who has been affected by heroin. It is not, that's, that's a normal occurrence here at this church. Matter of fact, at this church, it is normal to have abnormal stuff happen. Yes. <laughs> if you don't believe me, you should have been here for our last baptism. No. Trust me, church, as we are growing and as we are doing the will of God in this church, we need to be more intentional about having our own personal prayer time, being more intentional about praying for one another, being more intentional about praying for the lost, and being more intentional for this church to stay focused on why God has planted us here and has to make much of him and for every person in Hopewell and beyond to know him as Christ Jesus. I believe God has so much more in store for this church. I believe God wants to use this church to see and do far more abundantly than we could ever think and ask. But as we step out, as we step out into the darkness, trust me, we will face the schemes of the devil. We will face the battles. And yet James says, consider it all joy, my brothers, 
when you face trials of various kinds. If we're going to be a church that's going to push back the darkness, we need to be a church that is serious about prayer. It was an exciting time in the life of the church of Colossae when Paul sent this letter to. And it's an exciting time here in the life of Beacon Hill Church. See, I think this passage is very fitting for us at this season and this time in the life of our church. See, the church was founded in Colossae by this guy named Ephesus, who likely went to Ephesus. There's a lot of words there, isn't it? Yes. But he likely went to Ephesus, and he heard the gospel for the first time when Paul was in Ephesus preaching the gospel during his three-year ministry. Ephesus heard the gospel, and he was so excited about what he here heard, he went back to his town. He went back to Colossae, a place that had not heard the gospel, and he was so excited about what he had heard and what he had received that he was excited to tell everybody and anybody about this Jesus that he had just received as his Lord and his Savior. That's the way that it should be for us as well, right? When we hear about the saving power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it should move us to tell anybody and everyone about the one who came so that we can live forever. About the one who gave his life at Calvary. About the one who died on the cross. About the one who conquered the grave. About the one who rose victoriously. About the one who is coming back one day. About the one who we have eternal life. It should be an exciting Guess what? Ephraim came back after hearing the gospel. And he was excited and he started sharing the gospel. You know what happened? People started believing. Hallelujah. People started believing in this message. Everest wasn't a pastor. He wasn't seminary trained. He didn't know everything in the Bible. All he knew is what he heard and that Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone saves. And he was excited to share that message. He didn't say, look, I don't know enough to tell somebody about Jesus. I don't, I don't want to mess it up. I'm scared that I might offend people, that I might lose friends. No, he came back on fire to tell everyone about Jesus. And you know what happened? A church broke out. Hallelujah. <laughs> A church broke out. And people were coming to Jesus. And the whole town was being impacted by this simple message. But there was a danger to the church. You know, when they were sharing this message, people who didn't believe in this Jesus, people who were diluting and, and, and confusing the message of Jesus, false teachers were around. There were dangers that were happening to the church. And so when Paul wrote this letter to the church of Colossae, he knew that if the church was going to be who they needed to be, that they were going to have to move past their base faith into spiritual maturity. You know, the scripture says that we should be past milk by now. You should be on to solid food. We need that prayer to here at the church. You may have just come to Christ. You may have been in Christ a long time. But we need to keep growing and maturing in Christ Jesus. He knows that God has more in store for the church of Colossae than they ever could have thought and imagined. And so he knew that they needed to keep pushing the envelope. They needed to keep growing in him. I believe we have experienced some amazing things in our 18 months here. Yeah. We saw, we've seen some crazy acts of God that it can only be because of his glory and his power and his might and his grace in this town. We have seen that, but guess what, church? The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I believe we're going to have battles come our way. I believe the devil's going to get ticked off because you know what? We're going to be the church. We're going to be the church, and we're going to go love on those who no one else loves. We're going to, we're going to deal with the people that have been hurt by everybody else, and we're going to tell them the other one that will never hurt them is Jesus. That's the church we're going to be. That's the church who we are. And I think if we're going to do that, we need to understand as a church body, we need to understand the will of God for this church. We need to do the will of God for this church. And then we are going to be able to see some amazing, impactful things because of the grace of God working through us by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this town. Yes. I want you to see first this morning, church, 
that we must know the will of God. Look with me in verse 9. We must know the will of God, the scripture says. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Since Paul and Timothy heard about the church, since Paul and Timothy heard that Ephesus took this message back and started telling people about Jesus, they had started praying for the church. You know what? The kingdom is not just about Beacon Hill Church. The kingdom is bigger than Beacon Hill Church. We need to be praying for our other churches here in Hopewell to help us and partner with us to push back the darkness here in this town. I am so thankful. Literally, before I came up on this pulpit, another pastor contacted me and said, let's get together today, this week, because we need to get together more, and we need to pray together more, and we need to partner together to make much of Jesus in this town. Yeah. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that type of partnership in this town. But not only that, the gospel is bigger than hope. Well, we need to be praying for places that are starting biblical churches who are unashamed to preach this Bible, the inspired, infallible, and inerrant word of God. We need to be praying for people who are stepping up in the dark places of this world for them to, to be much of Jesus where they are. You know, here at this church, some of you may not know this, but 1%, and by the way, we're, we're like a wealthy church. I told somebody last week, I said, look, if someone gives a quarter of a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, we consider that a good offer. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't have any rich folks here, but if you are, come see me. Um, but that's, I'm just saying. But we give 1% of every dollar um, to help fund other church plants in this world. We, we know that if we're going to be the church that we are called to be, then we're going to have to be a reproducing church that is helping other people strengthen in their walk and their faith and make much of Jesus where they are. And so I ask that you would join me in praying for God to raise up churches that are biblical and shining the light of Christ for God's glory. Paul said, I, I've been praying for you. Paul said, I've been praying for the church of Colossae. I've been praying for y'all to make much of Jesus. But if you look in this passage, he goes from the general praying for the church to the specific praying of the church. He goes from simply praying uh, for the church to asking God some specific prayer request for the church. He intercedes for the church of Colossae on behalf of the church to God. He's saying, look, God, it is my desire that this church may know the will of God. He didn't want them just to meet for gathering purposes. He didn't want them just to come together one hour a week and just live as though God isn't present in their life the other 167 hours. He wanted the church to know and understand God's will for their life. I believe personally, some of you here today want to know God's will for your life personally. You want to know the decisions that you need to make, even the church you need to join, whether or not you need to stay in the relationship that you're in, whether or not you need to leave your spouse, whether or not you need to go on the mission field, whether or not you need to do something that you're completely uncomfortable with. Those are legitimate questions. Those are legitimate questions that we all have in our lives. What is God's will for my life personally? But you know, the church has to ask that, themselves that same question. What is God's will for our church? What is God's will for Beacon Hill Church? What is his specific will for us to be the most impactful, to be most glorifying to him in this town? We have to ask that question of ourselves. And Paul gives the answer here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, of how you personally and how the church corporately can know the will of God, and that is by having knowledge of the word of God. God will never tell you to do something that is contrary to his word. You can't pick and choose parts of the Bible. If God said it, you must do it. And guess what? If God said it 2,000 years ago, it is still reliable today. Just because society might try to change God's word, God's word will last forever. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he is the same forevermore. church. Look in the word of God. God's will is not a mystery. 
It is in his word. You want to know God's will for your life. Study the word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the truths of God's word in your life. But notice what scripture says. Because a great quote here uh, by Steve Lawson, uh, one of my great mentors in the faith. He said this. No one who is casual with God will grow to know him more deeply. You can't be casual with God and know the will of God in your life. Look what scripture says. You must be filled with the knowledge of the word of God. The word filled means to be controlled by. It shapes all your decisions, everything that you do. Let the word of God fill, overflow in your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let the word of God dwell in your soul. Let it be filled means how you process things. It's not like, well, I know what God says, but... My friend tells me to do this. That's not the will of God. Let your mind be filled with the knowledge of his word and not worldly knowledge. When you are filled with the word of God, you will have spiritual understanding and be able to discern what his purpose and his plan is in your life. One of my favorite scriptures where my daughter Katie can quote you because I quoted to her every time my prayer at bedtime pretty much. 1 Peter 2, 2, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. You must crave the word of God. Do not put garbage in your spiritual gas tank, church. Be filled with the word of God. But understand this, it is not enough just to know God's will for your life. I love Bible studies. I love to gather together. We gather together every week to learn more of God's will. But guess what? Knowing God's will for your life is not actually what pleases God. Secondly, this morning, what pleases God is not only to know his will, but to do his will. Verse 10, the first part says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. While many of us think that understanding this word is the hard part, to understand what God wants us to do is the hard part. The hard part is not understanding the Bible. The hard part is putting it into practice. When God tells you to do something, you may know what God's will is for your life, but it's so hard to actually step out in faith and doing it, right? Martin Luther King Jr. said this, faith is taking the next step even when you can't see the whole staircase. If we want to please God in this church, we must not only know his will, but do his will. That's a scary thing for us. That's why almost every week, and then Ben said it, man, literally, I tell you, if you're a guest here, you will literally say this in your sleep if you come back. Get comfortable. Tell them. They know it. It's what we try to live by in this church. It's our anthem. It's what we consistently try to do. It's naturally scary. But Paul says, if you want to know God's will for your life, guess what? You have to start walking. You have to start walking in God's will. You got to take steps to follow his will. Walk is to take the first step and then the next step. And yes, it's so scary because you don't know where your feet are going to land. That's the part about having faith in God. Allow him to be your Lord. For some of us, it's so tough to take that first step of faith in God's calling for our life. It's, it's so scary. Like we're starting to celebrate recovery here, hopefully within two months. And, and some of us are like, I'm so scared. I don't know what to say. It's just out of my comfort zone. It's so scary to do that. Some of us are like, I I'm so scared to take the next step onto the mission field. It's so scary to, to really know God's will and just to release it to him. Maybe financially, whatever, whatever step that you're, you're, you're struggling to make. Paul says, just start walking. Just start walking. Just start walking in the faith. You know as well. Start walking and it will please God. And as you start to walk in the will of God, you will start to understand his purposes and his plan for you in your life. As you just start walking. That's why so churches are most so church focused and not kingdom focused. Because they just absorb the knowledge and don't put it into practice. Yet we see here, if you want to please God. You not only know his will, but you do his will. And then we see some awesome impacts that happen from literally doing the will of God. This is what scripture says. There's three impacts that we see in verses 10, the back half of 10 through 11. It says, bearing fruit 
in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Scripture shows us that when we do the will of God, we shall literally see fruit being born. We should see fruit happening from us doing the will of God. I said it before, we, and if you're here today and, and you need a meal, we have a meal that, and by the way, I want to take a moment and just thank the ladies who prepare meals every Sunday. Yeah. I'm telling you, uh, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't need our praise. They don't need our, uh, so they just do it because they love God. And I'm so thankful for their hearts. And you know what? They, they feed a ton of people every Sunday. They, 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 they got a meal planned out, I think, to 2020. I'm absolutely <laughs> and I'm so thankful for them. But you know what? Not only do they want to, to feed your belly, they want to feed your soul. They want to see you know Christ. They understand that whatever we do, that we should be doing to glorify God. And we should see people come to Christ. We, they should see the heart that's behind everything we're doing. When, when we are doing the will of God, we will see fruit. We, that's why we had a guy who, who currently doesn't have a home come to Christ last week. Because we're, we're seeing fruit come from that ministry. Do you understand that? Everything we do should be to God's glory. And if we're doing it in his will, we will see fruit come from that. That is such a blessing to see. And the second thing that we actually see here, as a matter of fact, you got to ask yourself this question. Are you a fruit bearer? Or a fruit carrier. Because when I look at the Bible, God calls us not to be Christians, but to be disciples. Do you know the difference there? A Christian is someone who, who has just made a commitment of faith and, and just believes in Jesus Christ as Lord of their life. But to be a disciple of Christ is one who is making other disciples of Christ. One who is bearing fruit for him. That is what God's will is for your life and for this church. Is that this church is not about ourselves. But prayerfully one day not only will the rafters be full here with people worshiping Jesus. But we will send out churches around this town and around this globe for God's glory. That we would bear fruit for his glory not just for Beacon Hill Church. Amen. I just want to thank us. Continue to pray to get out of our comfort zone. But when we see this, this is what happens. You know him more. I can, I can give you testimony out of testimony. Those who are literally stepping out of their comfort zone, allowing God to use them. You know what happens? They go beyond just the knowledge, the base knowledge of the word of God. They get to see God's purposes clearly. They get to see what God's will for their life is. So, so awesome, more than they ever saw. I mean, I, I hate to give specific examples, but because there's so many I can do, and I, uh, so many people in this church, but I remember um, we had, we had more, I think it was Mariah Terry, Ryan Jenkins, and uh, Julie Woodward with us a couple of uh, months ago in Petersburg. Just circumstances had taken us there. We were surrounded by cops. We were helping a lady who was completely scared, wouldn't get out the car. And I remember Ryan Jenkins just looking up at me and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to experience this. For, I would have never thought in a million years I would be here, but thank you, God. You know, when you get out of your comfort zone and you just start serving people because you love Jesus, you'll start to see some amazing things happen. And you'll give God all the glory because you are blessed to be a part and get to see what is happening. Isn't that awesome to be a part of God's will and purposes in your life? But here's the deal. When you are doing, knowing God's will and you're doing God's will, and you're seeing the fruit be born, and, and you're seeing more of his purposes, it will help you go through the tough times you'll be able to go through. It will help you endure the trials, because you know that whatever you've got going on in your life, whatever battles you're facing, whatever crisis that you're going through, that it's not about you, it's about how God can use what you're going through for his glory. You start to understand it's a bigger picture. God, I don't know why I'm going through this divorce. I don't know why I'm going through this cancer. I don't know why, but whatever the reason is, use it for your glory, God. Yeah. Not, not for me. Use it for your glory. Yeah. 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 And then I, I just want you to see when you look at this passage, just read this last verse of this passage. It is so awesome because when you do this stuff, you are actually thankful to be used by God. Because you understand that God allows you. We are God's plan A. He could have chosen any way possible.
impossible to do his redemptive work, but he allows us to be a part of his work. Do you see this? It give faith to the Father who has the inheritance of the saints and the light. Guess what? If you know Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, this darkness will not last. You will spend an eternity in heaven. You know the light, and you will be worshiping him for all eternity. You have been set apart. You have been set free from the bondage of darkness. You have seen the marvelous light, and you don't have to wait to get to heaven. You get to experience the hope that is in Christ Jesus today. What a glorious thing. You read the scripture and we see that it's because of Jesus. Because of Jesus that we have forgiveness of the sin. Regardless of what you have gone through in your life, you have hope and forgiveness in and only because of Jesus Christ who bore the sins of Calvary so that you may know him. So that other people may know him. So that you can bear fruit. So that you can know him more. And this whole town will know how great our God is. So I ask you this morning, are you with us? Or are you with us this morning? Do you, do you want to see this complete town turned upside down by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I'm going to ask you to get out of your comfort zones. To do things that you, you don't even think that you're capable of. But guess what? God often uses those who can't think that they can do much and use them for extraordinary things for his glory. I believe that God can use each and every single one of you. Maybe you came here today just checking out this Jesus that I'm talking about. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to wonder what will happen when you die. You can leave here knowing where you'll spend eternity. And that is by trusting in Jesus Christ today. Scripture says today is the day of salvation. May you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord today. May you turn from your life and say, I don't know everything about this Jesus. But I heard this guy in that one and said, I want that to happen to me. I want the change to happen in my life. I want to leave here and I want to be that change in my family. I want to be the leader that God asked me to be. I want to be the leader of my subdivision. I want the whole world to know how great my God is. Will you come this morning at this time of invitation? Maybe you're here today and you just need prayer being obedient to God's will. Maybe you are one of the ones that are just completely struggling today. That's okay. We'd love an opportunity to pray for you. I'm going to pray and the prayer team will be up here the way we do it at Beacon Hill Church. We have we have a whole host of prayer people up here that want to intercede for you. They want to go on behalf of you to God. They want to just say whatever you need in your life, whatever the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, they want to pray for you this morning. So would you allow them to do that this morning? We're going to have two songs of worship, and I'm going to ask you to respond. Let us pray. Dear Holy Father, I thank you and I praise you for who you are. I thank you for being a God who loves us, who gives us hope, who gives us a purpose in this life. Lord, we're not just to be another church. There, there's plenty of churches. But we need to be a church that is a disciple-making church that is a bearing fruit that is making much of you in this town. Lord, I'm thankful for my partner churches today. I'm thankful for Jacob Holmes preaching the gospel. Thank you for Pastor Adams preaching the gospel. Thank you for Pastor Eddie preaching the gospel. Thank you for so many people that you brought in my life here at well. Lord, we are not in this as a competition against one another. In fact, we're not even in the competition against the devil because I read the Bible, he loses. Lord, I'm thankful that in your word, you said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not come back. Lord, with that promise, I can't imagine that anyone in this room today would not want to get out their comfort zone and serve you. Because if we are doing your will, we cannot fail. Because greater is he who is in us than he was in the world. Lord, I thank you for the promises of the scripture. I thank you for the hope of eternity that one day we will see with our eyes right, right now we just see with faith. But Lord, I believe. I believe in your power to change lives. I believe that you can change a life today. Because Lord, I've seen it happen in my life. I've seen it happen in many people's lives here today. So whatever people are struggling with, whatever they're dealing with, whatever questions that they have, I pray that they would respond at this time of invitation. Lord, may you get all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and respond to God's word as a prayer team.